Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivartha Gamani, an integration technical architect. There were some specific questions uh, to me uh, from the viewers on uh, how to apply client ID enforcement policy and uh, I thought I can give a quick video on explaining how we can apply uh, the policy to enforce client ID and secret in the Mule Soft API. Let's get started. I have created a simple flow for demonstration purpose with the uh, employee raml and uh, i added a resource path called order so uh, when invoked uh, i have designed in such a way that it gives uh, a success message so it's a simple uh, api so since our context of uh, focus is uh, on how we can enforce client id and secret so i thought i don't want to uh, add too much functionality into it so let's run this api now so i have this and uh, let me run here and I get the success message. So here you can see client ID and secret is uh, getting some dummy value on two, three. It's because uh, we have enforced it uh, temporarily on the RAML. For example, I can quickly show here. Required true in both client ID and secret. So it's expecting mandatorily some value and uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, applied policy yet. So let's run it again. So when you don't have any one of this, uh, it's bad request. So it's mandatory. So let's give it. So it has to be header and not the uh, query parameter. So the success message. Now let's deploy this into any point cloud hub. So right click and choose any point platform and deploy to Cloud Hub. Let's deploy. I'm going to pause this video since it's going to take time and I'll come back uh, once it's successfully deployed. While the application is being deployed, let's see the connectivity or relationship between user, application and the API. So uh, we are here in this flow and we are uh, deploying in the runtime manager. And uh, so uh, as a next step, we are going to build a new API and we are going to connect this API manager into the runtime manager uh, via this uh, component called API auto discovery. So which will then connect uh, API with the implementation and API we will be using it for applying non-functional requirements. So then as a final step, uh, uh, it's mandatory uh, to have an application because uh, API, as the name suggests, it's application programming interface and you can't uh, in interface with the implementation without an application. So you need to create an application first uh, and authorize it used by the user. The status indicates uh, that it's deployed successfully and the same is uh, reflected in the Cloud Hub console. So let's uh, test this application. So the success message is received and you can still note down the client ID secret is still dummy and it's actually, it's not enforced. You can give any value to get it executed. This is because uh, uh, we have uh, uh, deployed only the runtime manager flow and then we are yet to configure uh, API and the application. Let's go and configure the API now. Let's go to the API manager. and create a new API, we'll say uh, order API and the asset type we can choose it's a HTTP API and you can see the other details like group ID, asset ID version and API version you can leave it to default values and continue. Now we are going to choose a basic endpoint and uh, this endpoint, we are going to use the same uh, endpoint that we used in SOAP, uh, AP, SOAP UI. And uh, we will give the implementation URL. And uh, uh, that's it, and you can save it. So now the API is created because it's just a, a placeholder and in order to be ready to communicate to the implementation. So it's just a dummy interface and it's not talking to anything. So now you can see here the API status is unregistered. 
because we didn't establish the connection between API and its implementation. So as a next step, what we are going to do is to take care of this small star that I indicated here. So this indicates uh, the API auto discovery, which links uh, API into its implementation in order to make it active. Let's do that now. Let's configure the API auto discovery now. So before doing that, uh, let's make some minor modifications in the configuration XML. And uh, here I have added one line that indicates a configuration properties with a file siva app dot properties. So where uh, we are going to introduce uh, API ID, since the API is already deployed, uh, we can take the ID from there and uh, introduce API ID and then come back to uh, the flow and click on the global elements and click create and type in API and you can see API auto Dis discovery component coming. Let's configure that. And in API ID, let's use the property. And uh, the value of the API ID will be substituted from the properties. And uh, let's choose the flow name main, which will be applied for all the resource path in future. If you want to add more resource path, it will be applied as well since uh, uh, API router is available in employee main. So let's say, OK. Let's save it. And let's deploy it now. I click any point platform. So we got the deployment uh, window and click deploy applications. After setting up uh, um, API ID and deploy it, uh, we need to note down a few critical dependencies uh, in order to make the auto discovery work. So click on this uh, organization ID and click on business groups and you can click here and you will see the organization id client id and secret so these client id and secret will be required in order to link uh, uh, which api id suits uh, to the which organization is uh, identified through these client id and secret this is because uh, api id uh, might not be unique so in order to uniquely identify the api which you are going to deploy to your uh, registered uh, uh, cloud hub this uh, client id and secret is required so if you want to give it across the organization you can give it or uh, you can click on the environments click on the sandbox and you will uh, have the environment specific uh, uh, client id and secret which also you can use uh, to identify your organization so let's choose this uh, client ID. And uh, so the name that's required to identify this client ID is anypoint.platform.clientid and anypoint.platform.clientsecret. So these are the predetermined uh, details. And uh, in addition, you can see uh, anypoint platform uh, analytics base URI and, anal and uh, uh, anypoint platform base URI. So these are uh, used internally uh, for our API to contact and communicate to the AnyPoint uh, platform API. So internally, we are visually seeing via graphical UI, but internally it's happening via uh, internal API communication provided by AnyPoint platform. So let's copy this and let's apply this in the settings. Let's copy this. Let's go to Runtime Manager, choose the application, go to Settings, go to Properties, and uh, you can apply here, and you can apply changes. After applying the AnyPoint platform client ID and secret from the organization details, uh, the API is uh, unblocked and you can see here the API number, API ID is connected and it's available and the application is started successfully. And then now if you could see the API manager and the API should be active. And here is the API that we created, uh, created and it's active. So now let's go back to SOAP UI and then check what happens. But you can see uh, the result is still successful uh, even after uh, 
uh, applying the API and it's active, but still client ID and secret is uh, dummy and it works fine. This is because uh, um, we have created the API and we have connected to the implementation, but uh, we have not done the important piece of uh, details where we have not given this, uh, uh, I mean application, this both uh, is ready and it has to be connected to the application. Let's do that now. So let's go to this uh, API and let's view that in exchange. And let's uh, give uh, request access and let's create a new application. Let's say order application. And nothing else is needed, you can say create and uh, it will automatically provide you the api instance once the application name is created let's choose that and uh, click on request access so now you can see that uh, application is created which is the uh, application here and uh, this is connected to the api now so uh, in order to access that you have a client id and secret let's copy that so this is the client id and uh, this is the client secret so we created an application and uh, we have given access to the api that we just created and uh, let's go to the let's close this let's go to the api let's refresh that And under contract, now you can see this is the application which is linked. So now you have a legal contract where you have uh, uh, given your access uh, to the application that can interact with the API. Now let's go back to SOAP UI and uh, click on this. Again, you can still see it's successful with a dummy client ID and secret because uh, we have not applied the policy. So we have an API, we have an implementation, we have the application, it's all interconnected, but still we haven't enforced that policy yet. Let's do that now. So let's go to policies, apply new policy, and let's say uh, client ID enforcement, configure it. And it's expecting this uh, inbound properties uh, as a query parameter which is client ID and which is secret. Let's apply that. So now it's applied and it's going to take a minute or two in order to get this API policy applied. Let's go to the API and then try now. Now, if you go back to the API uh, runtime manager and then investigate the logs, you can see something like uh, client ID enforcement policy is applied successfully and it will get refreshed. It will take a minute or two and then you need to be patient until then. So now if you go back to the uh, SOAP UI and then attempt to run it, now you can see here it's invalid client. The request is now rejected. So now uh, our authorization policy, the client ID enforcement policy is applied. So and hence uh, you are required to supply this client ID and secret which is given for API. Let's go back. Let's give this uh, client ID, and client secret here. Now we are able to get the success. So now I'm altering this, uh, I'm tampering this client secret deliberately and then try and say it's invalid. Let's also see one other critical point which I missed out to inform to you. So while creating the API, you need to ensure that uh, you are checking this checkbox uh, uh, to comply that you are uh, working on the API created in Mule 4 or above. And uh, suppose this, the steps are the same and identical when you use uh, 3.8.4 as well, uh, except in that version, you might need to give API name and version together. Uh, but uh, so this will not be checked when you are working on the older version. And in Mule 4, you need to check this and then save it. So we have now successfully applied client ID enforcement policy to the API. 
and also i am going to give you some additional information which will be useful to you there can be more than one application uh, we can create and thereby creating multiple client id and secret pairs so if this is required when uh, you want to license your api to multiple people say you have created address validation api and you have different clients who want to use uh, your api and you can create uh, multiple applications and share corresponding client id and secret to the stakeholders that's all in this video hope you liked it if so please click the like button and subscribe my videos i'll come up with a more useful and interesting topics shortly again thanks for watching bye